This problem is about throwing a ping pong ball into a plastic cup. College students seem obsessed with this activity. I don't know, I don't know what's going on there, but we're going to treat it as a projectile and calculate its motion. So let's go ahead and just draw the problem. You're throwing the ping pong ball from 0.5 meters, which basically represents how high your hand is above the table, and you're given that it's going, you throw it at three meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees. You're given the initial uh, velocity. And the idea is you throw it into a cup that sits um, some distance away. We're trying to figure out the distance. And it's 0.2 meters high, 20 centimeter cup. And we know that it goes in. You made it. It went in. So we will draw our trajectory. It goes up like this and begins to fall under the influence of gravity. And it goes in. And the question is, how far away was the cup? Okay, in a problem like this, if you have a projectile problem where you're given the speed and the angle as an initial condition, you're kind of being given everything you need. This kind of a problem will largely just be mathematical calculations where you get a value at each step. It won't be a big algebraic mess where you take roots, usually. So, let's think about what we would do. Well, the first thing you're always going to do is break this into components. You're going to say, what is my vy and what is my vx? Because vy, the initial y velocity, tells you how long you're in the air, and vx stays constant and tells you how far you go. So let's go ahead and just do that before we think too much about the problem. Let's see, vy initial is, there's the sine, it's this component, so it's the opposite. So it's 3 meters per second uh, times a sine of 35. So that I get is, for the sine, 1.72 meters per second. And if I wanted the x component, uh, v x initial, 3 meters per second, and it's the cosine, cosine of 35, and I get 2.46 meters per second. All right, so we have our two components. And now we want to know how far it got, so we need to know how long it was in the air. So you might recall we called this the hang time. And we have a formula for the hang time which you maybe you memorized, but you can't use it because this is not a uniform projectile trajectory. Right? So this starts at one height and ends at a different height. You could use the hang time to figure out how long it took to get there, but you need to figure out how long it took to get there. So we don't use the memorized formula, but you have to figure it out. One way to approach that is to think of it really as two times and divide it by the center of the trajectory here when it gets to its peak height and when the y velocity is zero. That's a magic time in the projectile's life. So we could call this T1 to go up and then T2 to go down and solve those separately. Right, so that's, that's another way to go. Let's try that. So we're going to say that the hang time, which we like to call TH for hang time, is just going to be T1 plus T2. So T1, how are we going to get T1? Well, it's the case we have an initial y velocity up, and we have gravity pulling us down, and we remember that v final is v initial plus acceleration times time, and in this case, uh, v final is zero. v initial was 1.72, and acceleration is minus 9.8 for gravity, and there's the t1 that we're looking for. So you just turn this around, it's really just 1.72 over um, 9.8, so T1 is 0.176 seconds. 0.176 seconds. Very brief. Let's see. Now, so it went up, Vy went to zero, it basically stops in the y direction, and now it's got to fall. And it's got to fall acceleration over a certain uh, distance, but we're looking for a time. So in that case, we're going to use the standard uh, kinematics for constant acceleration expression. Uh, v final, I'm sorry, y final, 0.2. See, we're going to use y final equals y initial plus uh, vy initial t, but there is no vy initial. For this leg, it's gone where the vy has gone to zero, so it's just dropping, so that part's gone. Plus one half at squared, but a uh, is negative g, so we'll say minus one half gt squared. So that would describe the y drop. So we just stick in our numbers. It's going to end at 0.2. It started at 0.5, right? Because we're starting at the top and following to the bottom. Minus uh, one half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared, and that's t2 because we're doing it for a specific case. 
So this becomes minus 0.3, divide 0.3 by 4.9, you take the square root, blah, 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 and you get T2 is uh, 0.247 seconds. There's T2. 0.176 and 0.247, and you add them together, and you get the total time the thing is in the air. TH is 0.423 seconds. And that is not what we were asked. Okay, so that's the total time it's in the air. But now, to get what we're asked is how far did it go? Or how far must the cup have been away? And for that, you're going to say uh, motion with constant velocity, right? That is that the x final equals the x initial plus vx uh, t. The final is what we're looking for. The initial is zero. Really, we're just multiplying our x velocity that's constant times this time. It's really all we're doing. So 2.46 times 0.423. And I get that it must have been 1.04 meters away. 1.04 meters away, which sounds about right, throwing my distant memories of throwing ping pong ball into a cup, of which I actually have none, my imagined memories. Um, so that's pretty much it. So you can see, if you break it up into two parts, it's all really numerical. Not a lot of uh, nasty algebra to do. But let me show you another way you could do it. You don't have to break it up. Sometimes it's good just to write the position, equation, and then just solve it. Some people like to do it that way. So this was all intuitive to you and you knew what to apply, do it this way. If it wasn't, think of it this way. For getting the hang time, you would say, okay, how am I gonna get the hang time? I could just write R. You can always just write the position vector especially in this case where you're given all these numbers. Right? The position vector would be, let's see, it had zero x position, so zero plus, it had that, an initial x, v, i, t, so you could say 2.46 t, i hat, because it had no acceleration. Right? So that's just one term of the general position expression. And then in y, you could say it had an initial 0.5, um, it did have an initial y plus 1.72t, and then it also had uh, a gravitational term pulling it down, minus 1 half g minus 4.9t squared. So you could write it like that. And you would have to apply what you know about the problem. You'd, you'd just still have to get this idea, how long is it in the air, and then how far did it go during that time. So you'd still have to solve, you know, for the hang time. The way you do that is you'd say, how long was it in the air? Well, you would want to figure out the time when y equals 0.2. So you would literally just say 0.2 equals 0.5 plus 1.72t minus 4.9t squared. And this is now the hang time. And you'd solve that for t. And you can see now you have sort of a mess. Now you have um, a polynomial and you have to use the quadratic equation to solve it. You, know, you have your a and your b and your c, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, blah, blah, blah. You'll get two answers for the hang time. One will be positive, one will be negative. The negative one, don't freak out. Negative time, what is negative time? It's just where this parabolic trajectory would be at zero, way back here before what we called t equals zero. But the positive one you'll get will be 0.423 seconds. And then you'd plug that in to here and you get the same answer. So you can start with this, just this position vector if you like, but you might have to do a little bit more, more algebra to get there. But if you see it intuitively, you can just do it this way, no algebra. That's for the case when you're given the initial velocity and angle, full initial speed and angle.